hate people that take drugs, you know, like customs officers and policemen. <laughs> Phone the drugs helpline and you get this woman's voice and she went, if you want information on cannabis, press hash. <laughs> Last year in London, there was 100,000 people went marching to legalise cannabis. And they're all marching going, what do we want? <laughs> <laughs> When do we want it? <laughs> what? <laughs> I had a night off last night, so I phoned this place up. You know, they deliver to your house. Domino's Pizza. Have, have you heard of them? Yeah. Domino's Pizza. You phone them up and they... Did, well, I've got this prat on the phone. He said, hello, Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Carl speaking. How can I help you? I said, well, have a guess, Carl. <laughs> I said, you wouldn't have a radiator cap for a 1979 I was stopping in a nice hotel there, or a nice lodging house, actually, in Bolton. Nice four-bedroom, semi-detached slum. <laughs> I said to the woman, I said, there's a fly swimming in the soup. She said, then you have too much soup, it should be paddling. <laughs> I said, the dinner's lovely, but that big Alsatian dog hasn't stopped barking. She says, no wonder you're eating off his plate. <laughs> But her husband was a nice fella. He was lying in bed looking for work. <laughs> I said, can you not get a job? He said, there's no work at my trade. I said, what's your trade? He said, I'm a Zeppelin builder. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I couldn't sleep in that bed last night. There was a dead flea in the bed. She says, a dead flea will do you no harm. I said, I knew that, but there was 40,000 came to the funeral. <laughs> She said, there's not a single flea in this house. I said, I know that. They're all married to my big family. <laughs> and I said, the cockroaches are jumping from the wardrobe onto the bed like a springboard. She said, if you pull the bed away from the wall, they'll miss it. <laughs> I said, I've done that and the cockroaches kept pulling it back. <laughs> and I said, I'd like to talk to you about the ceiling in my bedroom. She says, what about it? I said, I'd like one. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> you can live in a big mansion, you know, or a detached, or a semi, or a two up and two down. But it all depends on your neighbours, doesn't it, how happy you are. <laughs> As a fella lives next door to me, I hate him. <laughs> Be honest. No, his garden's immaculate. <laughs> you know, he's got a fly mow. <laughs> you know them long simmers for the edge of the lawn? And pruners. And he's always swanging about it like, and he makes a point. And when my missus comes out to hang the washing house, he's dirty with the pruners. You know, where's Eddie? It's nothing to do with him, has he? <laughs> and my missus says, oh, he's somewhere in the grass. <laughs> but the rose comes. There always comes a time, ladies and gentlemen, when them people need you. <laughs> <laughs> because, as I say, you've got a smashing car, fly mo, and simmers and pruners and that. And he's not even on the phone.
<laughs> and he came home the other day. And there was no sign of his missus. So he went upstairs and she's lying on the bed there. And just her briefs in her bra. And she's sh shaking and uh, sweating cobs. He said, what's to do? She'd have had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes to our house, you know. So yeah, he can use your phone to say, and he said, wife's had a heart attack. So he's dialing 999 with the ambulance. And one of his kids come and said, hey, Dad, my Uncle Charlie's in the wardrobe there with no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> so he slammed the phone down, you know. I said, oh, I take it easy with the phone. <laughs> and he ran back in their house like... <laughs> into the bedroom and I followed him. And he went to the wardrobe and he said, hey, Charlie, what's the score? <laughs> Charlie said, what do you mean? He said, well, there's the wife there lying on the bed, just had a heart attack. <laughs> he said, and you're running around the house like that, frightening the kids. <laughs> I love, I love all that fast food jobby, I love all that. You know, um, have you seen these Chinese opening up all over the place now? You know, all you can eat for 12 quid. I thought, that's, that's reasonable. You only get one chopstick. <laughs> uh, and when I'm working in Birmingham, I, lo I love to go to Birmingham and, uh, you know, because the curry there, fabulous. I always have the chicken tarka. It's like a, a chicken ticker, but a little otter. <laughs> But I was there recently. <laughs> I was there recently. <laughs> in, in Birmingham, and, and the waiter came up and he went, uh, Curry, okay? I said, Yeah, put me down for my way, Frank Sinatra. I've been in. I've been in the hospital because Denzel is working as a, a male nurse now. He's doing very well. He's very good. And, and I said to her, how is Denzel doing? She said, well, he's a very enthusiastic young lad. She said, he's a, he gets things mixed up a little bit, but he's very, very willing. She said, he's very willing. I said, what do you mean mixed up? Well, she said, I told him to give a woman two tablets at five o'clock, and he gave her five tablets at two o'clock. And then I told her to give the man one injection at four o'clock, and he gave him four injections at one o'clock, so he get things mixed up. I'm a bit concerned at the moment. I've just sent him down the men's ward to prick a man's boil. <laughs> My grandma, bless her, she's 98, and uh, we had to put her in a home. And, um, I mean, she was, she was like a fish out of water. She died. For. This has got to be stopped. It's supposed to evolve. Not work. Work is good from your heart, to your family, to whatever you do, evolution, creativity, kindness, compassion, work, jobs, they can get fucked. I've had enough. Why do we have to do them? Everything's fucking built. You got a house? Yeah. You got a toilet? Yeah. You got a pub? Yeah. Well, sit the fuck down and evolve, you cunt. <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> Little creature. <laughs> it's gotta be stopped working. It's a trap. It's a fucking trap. Five days on, two days off. 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 But how long does this last till you're fucking dead? Five days on, two days off. Five days on. And it's not even two full days off, is it? It's not two full fucking days off, because Sunday's right next to Monday. Monday's going, can you fucking feel me? <laughs> hey? You can fucking feel me, can't you? Like you didn't get up till 10 to 4 this afternoon. Be back in bed in about two fucking hours. Fuck, it's got to be stopped, it's a trap. It's made up by the ruling elite, so we're tired and poor and can't rebel or philosophise about our own existence and actually fucking evolve properly. 
<laughs> instead of... Of course it is, it's slavery, but we've got to get our own accommodation and food. <laughs> what the fuck it is? Isn't there some illusion they gave up slavery for morality? <clears throat> they did some fucking maths, man, look at this, we've got to look after these fuckers. We've got to feed them, we've got to clothe them, they get sick, we've got to fix them, we've got to give them something to live. I've worked it out, we can just give them two bucks fifty now, we'll tell them to fuck off. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> By the way, you lot, uh, you're uh, free to go. <laughs> uh, we'll see you back here at 7.30 tomorrow morning. Right. <laughs> Should be two days on, five days off. That way, everyone can have a job. Yeah. There's not enough fucking work. Two days. Who wouldn't do two days? I'd do fucking two days. It's common decency. <laughs> and that's simple fucking common decency. I'm on the earth, all right, fuck, two days, I'm in. Most people do two days. What's better than two fucking days as soon as you have your first day? What's tomorrow? Last fucking day, yeah. mate. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, some people would do more. See, we just think the world all has to be the same. Fuck that. I'll do two. Some people would come up and go, oh, what would I do, Steve? I've met them. I'd be bored. <laughs> two? What the fuck would I do with the rest of the week? Don't you get bored? <laughs> no. What do you do? I'll wake up, look out the window. <laughs> yeah. Bird. <laughs> Keep. Keep. <laughs> well, I'm bored, Steve. Well, go drive a bus. <laughs> fuck yeah. I'll be ready in 45 minutes. You can fucking pick me up. But I love farming communities. I once went to a farmer and said, can you use me on the land? He said, no, we've got, we've got special stuff. <laughs> Ladies, have you noticed your man, when he's had alcohol, he turns into a bit of a sex god? <coughs> Stood there in his lemon wife fronts <laughs> With white piping. <laughs> one black sock. Stood there trying to be a Chesterfield. <laughs> Chippendale. <laughs> then he comes out with them sexy words, doesn't he? Wake up, love, my friend wants to see you. <laughs> That's when the actress comes out in New Girls. The Joan Collins. Don't you touch me. <laughs> when I married you, I thought you were brave. So did all my mates. If you were half a man, you'd take the children to the circus. Well, if it was half a man, I'd be in the circus. <laughs> I did a show with a Chinese magician. His name was on too long. He came on. <laughs> Juggling with four stiff-necked geese. And we had... Um, we had these uh, Cossack dancers on, and I think the money they paid them, they should dance standing up. Two fellas finished the game of golf, gone in the clubhouse. On the first pint, mobile. Hello, your darling, how did your golf go? He said, I played really well. Played really well today. He said, darling, you know that Mercedes Sports? I've got one in the garage. He said, well, go and get it. Go and get it. He said, you deserve it. Go and get it. She said, thank you, darling. Thank you. Bye. He said, bye. Who's this phone? <laughs> Being in equity, as we are, equity members, do you know, remember the film Tenko about the Japanese prisoners of war? Well, being an equity member, and they were filming it in Lancashire, they phone you up and they say, do you want to be an extra? 
so anyway, I've gone down to the filming of, of uh, you know, Tenko, and there's me, and they dress us up, you know, as Japanese prisoners of war. There was me and seven thin blokes. <laughs> And this producer walked up, and he wasn't exactly, you know, a prop forward for Wigan. He said, what are you supposed to be? <laughs> I said, I'm a Japanese prisoner of war. He said, you must be 17 stone. I said, they only caught me yesterday. <laughs>